Hello everybody and welcome to episode 20 would you believe of Quick Test Tuesday here on the Sparkly Knowledge YouTube channel. And in today's episode I have a brand that needs absolutely no introduction at all to anybody who's ever washed a car in the UK and that is Autoglim and this is their engine and machine cleaner. And like most Autoglim products it's designed for the ordinary person to pick up off the shelf and use with minimal instructions. Which also makes it a perfect product for me to test in this series. So without further ado let's get on with it. So let's take a look at the engine bay in question and as you can see from these images it's really not too bad. It certainly isn't anything that you'd describe as a disaster detail anyway. And there is a good reason for that. This is one of our own cars and I do tend to clean the engine bay at least 3-4 to four times a year. And ordinarily that would be done with one of the multitude of APCs that I have on my shelves. And a lot of you would probably think well if you have APCs that are going to do just as good a job why on earth would you go for a ready to use product like this? And to be fair that's a very good question however when I started this video series it isn't necessarily about finding products that I would use it's about finding products that are available to normal everyday people and the sort of products that they're going to pick up off the shelves and use. Not everybody's going to want to buy 5 litres of an APC and then have to dilute it at 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 50 to 1. Some people just like to be able to pick up a product and use it as it is and I have nothing but respect for that. Now those are exactly the types of products that brands like Autoglim have available to their customers and they're exactly the types of products that certainly I used when I first got into car care or car maintenance. I don't think there's any one of us who don't currently or haven't at some point owned a bottle of Autoglim Super Resin Polish. So for this test I'm going to forget everything I know about the advantages of using dilutable all purpose cleaners and just take a look at this one on its own merits and decide am I happy with my purchase or would I want to ask for my money back. Now whilst I'm going to try and avoid turning this into a how to video there's a couple of bits of advice I'd give to anybody washing their engine bay. One is to make sure the engine is nice and cool to the touch if you can put your hand on it it's fine and the second would be if possible to cover your alternator whether it's with a plastic bag or whatever you have available. Now modern cars are fairly well waterproof and this may not be essential but it's a habit I've always had and it's something I'm always going to do. Starting then with the underside of the bonnet, as I don't want to do this after I've cleaned the engine bay and have all that dirty water dripping back into it again. And continuing with the underside of the bonnet and you can see here just how well the product actually foams up when it's being agitated. Moving on then to the potentially grubbier areas of the engine bay and what you do need to be careful with here when you're using the degreaser is not to degrease any areas which need to have grease i.e. where your bonnet catches you have springs and mechanisms around there that you do potentially want to keep lubricated. Now of course it's okay to clean these areas but it's just important to remember to apply some sort of lubrication afterwards whether that be a grease or some form of lubricating spray. Working in these darker areas and you can really see the product starting to foam up now. Yeah. One of the neighbours cats making a guest appearance there. Now some of you may notice the brush I'm using here. This is clearly not some sort of high end expensive detailing brush. This is just a 1 inch round sash brush from a set I purchased on Amazon. And whilst I obviously wouldn't use these on the paintwork of the car, they're absolutely ideal for these sorts of jobs and cleaning around the dirtier areas. Now they do come with a metal collar but I find just wrapping some insulating tape or electrical tape around the metal collar just alleviates any problems that might occur, i.e. them scratching anything that they might come into contact with. Now these brushes are relatively cheap so if anybody's interested in them I'll leave a link below where you can buy them. You may also have noticed throughout this test that I have, as instructed, been using the product quite liberally. However, by the time I got to the end, I'd probably used maybe 50 60 mils of product, which means this 1 litre bottle could do potentially 15 to 20 washes or 2 cars for a couple of years. But of course, that means nothing if the product's no good, so let's get it rinsed off and just see what sort of cleaning job it's done on this engine bay. Now 
for a domestic pressure washer, the machine I'm using to rinse this away is a relatively powerful one. This is the P80 Master from Ava of Norway which produces 160 bar of pressure and can actually go through 600 litres of water per hour. And the only reason I do mention this, which is something I did touch on earlier in the video, is that although I say that modern cars are fairly well waterproof, there still is always a risk, particularly when you're spraying water around electrical components and connectors, so you do just have to be a little bit careful. That being said, I do have the adjustable lance set to the lowest output setting, which is actually gentle enough to put your hand in front of from a distance of about a foot. And as you can see here, it's rinsing away this auto glim engine and machine cleaner with absolutely no issues whatsoever. So far so good then for this product, it's incredibly easy to use, it actually has a really pleasant smell for an engine degreaser, and as you can see here, it's rinsing away very easily. I should point out here that although you may see steam coming from the bottom of the engine bay, that's purely because the ambient temperature is so cold, it's actually only around 3 or 4 degrees, it's nothing whatsoever to do with the engine being too warm to carry out this process. Going around and soaking up most of the water with an ultra absorbent towel, and of course removing the plastic bag from around the alternator, I certainly don't want to start the car with that in place. Once I've soaked up most of the water with this old plush towel, I'm going to grind again with the second microfiber and just soak up any remaining wet spots. And then I'll be able to take a look at the final results. And here we are then. So whilst it might not have been that bad in the first place, I think this product has done an excellent job at removing any other bits of dirt and grease that had gathered up in the engine bay. So before I apply any trim dressing onto the bonnet, that only leaves one question. Well you may have picked up throughout this test that I thoroughly enjoyed using this product and it's a no brainer that it's going straight back on the shelf. Autoglim have built up a reputation over the past few decades of making products that are both easy to use and really efficient and this one's absolutely no different. Surprisingly it's actually the first time I've used an Autoglim product on the channel but it certainly won't be the last. And that ladies and gentlemen is all I have to say about that. If you liked the video please do remember to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate you making it this far and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Take care.